there is a distinction between direct and conjugated jaundice. So many of us are aware of the word direct hyperbilirubinemia and conjugated, but it actually makes a difference in the lab. Conjugated jaundice is actual uh, conjugated bilirubin from the liver conjugation process. Direct bilirubin is only the measure of uh, the bilirubin component which reacts even before we add the accelerating agent. So that is a lab technique related. So the conjugated bilirubin is always a little lower than the direct bilirubin because some part of the indirect bilirubin also reacts directly a small percentage and that's why the higher the indirect bilirubin, the higher the direct bilirubin as well. So uh, because of this, the direct bilirubin concentrations are higher and more variable than conjugated. However, you have to follow whichever your lab is using. For the breastfed infants who are still jaundiced at three to four weeks of age and for formula fed infants who are still jaundiced at two weeks of age, the total and direct reacting or conjugated bilirubin should be measured to identify possible pathologic cholestasis. So there is a small change that for breastfed babies we can be more relaxed and wait till three to four weeks provided the baby is thriving, the jaundice isn't worsening. Uh, however, in my practice, I tend to do a direct bilirubin in the first uh, week or so if the baby needs a serum bilirubin measurement for any reason. So we have a baseline level and subsequently if it is abnormal, we review it. Uh, the step what to do next is also changed. So the North American and European uh, Society for Pediatric Gastroenterology, Hepatology and Nutrition defines a direct serum bilirubin more than 1 mg percent as abnormal whereas a cutoff of more than 0.3 has been used for conjugated bilirubin. So if you remember more than one for direct bilirubin, it's adequate. The positive predictive value for biliary atresia and other causes of pathologic cholestasis can be greatly improved if you just repeat the measurement. Suppose your measurement is above one, you don't necessarily need to jump to investigating as a conjugated jaundice. You follow up the measurement after one to two weeks and if it is rising, it would be more worrying. If it is coming down, you can reassure. Uh, an increase in the direct or conjugated bilirubin suggests the possibility of pathologic cholestasis. Previously, we used to say direct bilirubin of more than 20% of the total. This is no longer uh, regarded as necessary for the diagnosis of cholestasis. Again, for the same reason that when the indirect bilirubin goes up, the proportion of direct bilirubin uh, goes up as well. So you may be over diagnosing more patients. In these cases, you would just repeat after a week or so to make sure it's coming down. Uh, one to two weeks is reasonable, but you don't want to exceed a month of age by the time you diagnose pathologic cholestasis because biliary atresia treatment should be early. It's important to also consider other causes of neonatal direct hyperbilirubinemia other than biliary atresia that would require early treatment. So these include urinary tract infection, isoimmune hemolytic disease, sepsis and some inborn errors of metabolism. So we shouldn't forget these treatable causes when we are looking for it. Of course, most of the flowcharts that we have for workup of direct conjugate, conjugated hyperbilirubinemia cover these as well. So the urinary uh, investigations are included and uh, your DAT blood group CBC are included for picking up hemolytic disease, sepsis and uh, endocrine causes are not mentioned in this, but we should be clear that we don't uh, miss out thyroid and uh, hypopituitarism as well as possible reasons for conjugated jaundice.